This episode of Guildcast is brought to you by Netflix for a free 30-day trial. Head on over to netflix.com slash GameBreakerTV. GameBreakerTV. What's up, everybody, and welcome to Guildcast episode 66 for April 4th, 2013. You're watching Game Breaker. I'm Gary Gannon. Coming up on today's show, April Fools, the joke that is not a joke at all. Uh, we go over all the major changes from the March update. Maybe not all of them, but some of them. And talk about the death of eight team tournaments, all that and more. But first, from Massively.com, it's Elizabeth Claire. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. Awesome, back on an odd day. Yes, us on an odd I'm very day, confused anyway. by this. Yes, yes, we missed yesterday, so we're doing this, recording this now on a Thursday. But we are normally sticking to the Wednesday, six p.m. And yes, from Game Vega TV and Massively Stream Team, mm -hmm. it's Mr. Richie Pacopio. Howdy, folks. Hello, sir. How is everybody? Everybody's awesome. I'm awesome. You're awesome. Yeah, I'm doing that well. Dra that dragon, awesome. That dragon is super awesome. That dragon is super awesome. I like him. All right, can we uh, can we just put our fanboy and fangirl hats on for for a quick second here and say that ArenaNet are freaking awesome this week? So yes, this is by far the single. I gotta I gotta re this is this I gotta re reframe this, but this is by far the coolest thing I have seen a company do. For April Fools, for non April Fools, whatever. So this this confused all of our game breaker peeps. Like everybody thought this was a joke. Like everybody was like, oh, I thought this was like an April Fools thing. And it's like, no, this 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 is in the game. Um if you guys have not logged in, you might want to log in and check out Super Adventure Box. Um sometime this month for sure. Yes. I want to talk about that. Cause I'm not so sure this is going away, but I don't know if we have confirmation on that, but you guys can tell me in a few, but so they, uh, they put this page out on the, on the, on the site here. And it was like this crazy eight bit thing with super hot graphics, meet moto, like all this crazy stuff. It looks like Minecraft and it's big, big fun, big rewards, three awesome levels. It's called super adventure box. And you know, it was April fools and everybody was like, Oh, this is a joke until they logged in. And guess what? It's actually in game. They put it in the game. Yeah. And for an April Fool's joke, that is a lot of effort. It is so much effort. It was really funny, you know, as, as Masterly Press, I was able to get in the week before and kind of play through it. So I knew that it was real. So it was so amusing to see everybody like comment when the videos first popped up, like the commercial. Everyone's like, oh, that's cute. You know, what a funny idea. I'm glad that they put the effort of putting that um, web page together. And like, no, 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 no. You don't get it. Like, it's, it's the joke is that it's not a joke. So I was super yeah. thrilled. People data mined some of like the weapon skins and stuff a little bit in advance. So I kind of suspected that something was going to be in the game, right? They're going to do something for April 1st. There's going to be a new cool jumping puzzle or something. And then when I logged in and started just playing this, I, I mean, my jaw dropped. I was like, wow, they created like a full old school game inside this game. It is unbelievable. The music is done. The, all of the the assets are you know old school throwback. There's hidden levels, boss fights, achievements, rewards. What? It's incredible. <laughs> Liz, it's tell insane. me a little bit about what, Liz. What's your experience been? I'm sure you've run it a gazillion times. Yeah, roughly. Um, so because the chests for the bosses are all um, character bound rather than account bound, I've been able to just take all through it by the gazillion. I still haven't seen everything. Um, so there are achievements for, you know, seeing worlds and achievements for getting all the baubles. And I have, I think, about two thirds of the secret rooms sort of um, uncovered. But I still like there's still bits of the game that I have not seen because I've been so busy, like going through. I finally got um, yesterday. I saved up enough bobble bubbles for the great sword skin for my Sura Mesmer, which I'm really excited about. Wait, so I want to um, hold so, up. I want to tell me a little bit about, like, explain to me some, because this goes into like the rewards and stuff that people are going to go yeah. after. So may, explain for some people out there, like, what are some of the rewards that we're going after? We are MMO players after all. 
Of course, it is all about the rewards. Um, so as you're going through the world, you will see little blue things hovering in the air, and those are baubles, which are the sort of in Super Adventure Box currency. You can also get them by killing things or opening chests. Um, and then you can also trade in up to two, 250 baubles, turns into a bobble bubble. Try saying that like 8 billion times fast. Um, and you can get bobble bubbles from opening boss chests at the end of levels. And you can turn those in for a whole bunch of things like continue coins, or um, I've mentioned that I'm a fan of the weapon skins because they're beautiful, or um, a couple other things they have. So uh, you're kind of going about it, getting all those, but you're also looking at like, can I collect every bobble in this zone? Can I find all the secret bits in this zone? And you're listening to the amazing music, which Gary's playing right now because it's super yes. great. Yes. So <laughs> even. Like you brought up before, you brought up the music, and I like the music is so awesome that ArenaNet actually released the entire thing up on SoundCloud. So if you go to SoundCloud.com/ArenaNet, you can listen, and this is just one of the tracks. I mean, it's so good. It's unbelievable. What do you think? So what do you think about this? I mean, you guys both mentioned you should go, Richie, but you said you know make sure to get into this before April is over. But are you? Are we? Do we have confirmation that it's going away? Because uh, I don't understand why if they put this much effort into something like this, why not just leave this back in the game? What they've said is that it's going to be cyclical, and that's the plan right now. I mean, I, they've they've also said that this is you know they're they're proving out this concept right now, and uh, they've made comments that depending on how popular it is, it depends on how far it'll go, and people are people are going nuts over it right now. I mean, this is probably the you know. It was probably since Winter's Day or maybe the Halloween event. This is the thing that people have been most excited about in Guild Wars 2 in a long time. So I think they're def they're definitely making a, a World 2. Um, they did confirm that it is not coming out, uh, you know, next month. Uh, but, you know, I, you know it, it, there's two ways to do it. They can either leave it in and just leave it open, or they can kind of take it away for a month or two, and then when World 2 is complete, they can bring it back, and they can just bring it back every few months or so. You know, it's it's people love doing it, and I could see like new players who might have missed it if it goes away, kind of being a little upset. But at the same time, taking it away and then bringing it back kind of makes it more exciting. So why do you think why know. do you think this resonated so much with gamers? Do you think it's the fact that it's so not disconnected, but so different from what you would expect and so outside of the box, or was it just that it's like a mini game? Well, maybe that's not so mini, but just awesome. Like, why why do you think players just reacted the way they did? Because everybody's talking about. It. I think it, it helps that it is fairly casual content. They've been adding a lot of kind of high-end stuff like fractals and stuff that isn't necessarily a casual commitment where this is, you know, you can go in and complete the whole thing on infantile mode in 45 minutes and have seen pretty much the whole thing. So it's a kind of casual introduction and it's like a hardcore nostalgia play. And there are so many gamers for whom that resonates so much that I think nostalgia was kind of the way to go with something that so directly throws back to kind of the roots of gaming. Yeah, and I agree with that. I think the nostalgia is a big thing. Like, think about, though, if you tried to make, like, a, an old-school 8-bit kind of platformer right now, there'd be some people that might get excited about that, but it's not really going to do much. But having it inside the game that you're already playing is huge, and that's what makes it so much fun. You know, it's like you're using your character, you're, you can benefit your character, but you're, you're, you're playing through a complete, you know, uh, nostalgic experience. Uh, you... You know, Elizabeth was talking about the rewards this before. Commercial. I'm sorry, this commercial just cracks. So me. Oh. Is on. It's so ridiculous. They knocked it out of the park with this thing. It's oh, so they funny. did. It's from uh, Brimstone. <laughs> uh, what I was saying was the, the bubbles you also use to unlock uh, new items and tools, kind of like Link style, like Legend of Zelda style, mm -hmm. in, in the game. So you're using that for like a dual reward thing. And so it, it's. It's got this perfectly encapsulated content. It's got rewards. It's got challenges. It's got secrets. It's it's got this cool vibe to it, and you know, and and you get things out of out of uh, you know, out of the mini game to reward your character too. So I just think it's it's just very well done, and it's fun. I think that's most of all. It's just fun. It that's is. the thing. Th yeah, and that, as I was gonna say, I think one of the reasons it resonates so well is that it's just there for just complete enjoyment of just being stupid and fun and goofy and is what it is, and that's kind of like. That's not something you always really have in an MMO, right? Like it's usually not that it's serious business. You are having fun, but you're like you're usually not like I've got a goal. Shaving I'm doing this. World, I'm doing it with yeah. my guild. I'm saving the world. I'm raiding or you know, whatever. And like with something like this, you're just like this is totally goofy, and I'm having a great time. Yeah, and I think they could have gone so much small scale. They could have just like put in an instance jumping puzzle that was 16 bit and like called it good. 
But the fact that they went to so much effort and so clearly put in so much love and attention, it just makes it so fun to experience and, and makes it really enjoyable to go through it and see that they obviously cared about creating a really cool game. How fleshed yeah. out do you guys think that they'll make this this super adventure box? I mean, it, it, I think it's obviously a hit, right? I mean, there's no yeah. doubt about that. I think most it, it made waves across the entire internet. So how, how I don't know, how big do you think they'll, they'll take this? Do you think they'll just keep adding on to this? Like this almost alternate 8-bit universe inside of game inside of a game? I think so, uh, because they made the, they were smart. They made the hub area uh, where you kind of enter the first zone, right? They, they made three other kind of houses there they already said they have plans for a, a mountain world and like a castle world and something else kind of world and so they already have the hub sit, situated so they can open up new zones and they already started world two or yeah world two yeah you can go through one one uh one map there one zone and, and world two so i think i think they they, they they're definitely going to go for it they're working on new weapon skins already and it's just so popular people are so excited about it so i think this will stay in the game for a while Definitely, definitely cool stuff. If you guys haven't checked it out, go check it out. Super Adventure Box. It's funny because when we when this came up on April first, and I, I passed it over to our editor in chief at Game Breaker, and she was just like, "Oh, another April Fool's thing." And I'm like, "Well, kind of, but not really." And she's like, "What do you mean?" I'm like, "Well, it's in the game." She's like, "What do you mean?" I'm like, "No, it's in the game." And she's like, "What? They put this in the game?" And I was like, "Yes, that's why we need to post this now because you need to get the word out because this is not just a joke with a web page." If it was, yep. even if it was just a web page, I'd be like, well, that's a really good April Fool's joke. Like, that was a good web page. Wow, you guys did a really good job. Not the fact that you put it in the game. Yeah. You got to do a Ganon plays on that, man. It's any, any level yes. character, any, anybody could jump in. You should yep. do it. You should. Good thinking. Okay, we'll do that next week. Good All right. thing, so, Let's uh, talk about the March update. The March update has arrived. I was uh, stuck at the uh, terribly filthy game developers conference. I hate that place. Yeah, you poor thing. It was terrible. Uh, fill me in. Do I have a lot to catch up on? Uh, just, a just a patch. Just a patch. Just a little thing. Culling's gone. No big deal. Uh, yeah, just Your new thing. instances. Right. No big deal. So, looking at the patch notes, it seems like there is literally a ton of new content here. We can't go through all of it, obviously, but big and small, um, as well as a bunch of achievements. So, what's first up? Tell me, give me, fill me in. What's the new area like? Is this the um is this the castle that you saw behind the locked gate previously? Yeah, so your two instances, um, you kind of have been introduced to these two NPCs, Bram and Rox, who are a Norn and a Char respectively. And you're going to go with them to kind of their stomping grounds to kind of help them deal with um the Molten Alliance invasion there. So you're gonna go up into the North Nolan Hatchery with Rox and kind of see what's going on in there. And then yeah, Bram's instance takes you into sort of the gated community that we kind of been able to see but haven't been able to get into you can go on with him save them save the villagers um and so yeah so it's not like a huge new zone but the instances are new content that we haven't seen before as far as areas are concerned and i hope they continue tucking stuff like that in personally yeah you mentioned that, yeah. um uh uh bram and rocks richie what did you what did you think of those characters how are the characters that they've added yeah, they're, they're interesting because they have different character models than we've ever seen before, right? <laughs> and uh, Rox, Rox has very big eyes, and Bram's got this purple flock of seagulls haircut. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know if I want to do any spoilers to it, but you know, Bram is somebody. And, uh, <laughs> That's in his name. He has yeah, a name, and he's Bram somebody. Air son. Yeah, it's he, he's the son of Aerys the Galkin, which is interesting. Or we, is he? Yeah, or, I don't well, know. She says least. he is, so it's really not. A... Yeah, so that's kind of interesting. So you got some some story bits, but um, yeah, and they actually did another way of doing cutscenes. They they kind of pulled away from the personal story cutscene and they kind of made it more like in the game world, um, uh, which was an interesting choice. I, I I think I like it better, to be honest. Um. It kind of, you know, you feel like you're more staying in the world than, than, than it bringing you out of the world and just watching these kind of heads talk at each other. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, the, it, I think if they continue to put out, like, new instances like this fairly regularly, like, not having to wait a whole nother patch cycle in order to get, like, month. one. Yeah, a whole nother month just to get one more little instance in here. If, if they were able to somehow do this weekly or biweekly, this is the, what the living story should be. It's kind of like 
you know, you, you, I don't know. It's it's actually story. It's actually instance, instances that you can go through and actually, you know, get deeply involved in it. Um, it, it felt a little short. It was about an hour's worth of content. Mm -hmm. um, but I like where it's going. If they can ramp it up and produce more, you know, uh, and more quickly, I think the living story's got potential. But we've been waiting a long time for this, and you know, it hit and it was fun, but it was very short. Do you think that they're do you think that they're communicating enough like well enough what's going on for people who don't read the patch notes? I feel like it'd be really hard to miss to a certain extent because um you get an in-game mail that has a link that you can click that like shows you on the map where to go and it circles it. So like you can't really not see that unless you just completely ignore the new mail notification, which I guess you could do. Um, so they're making it really easy, and they're really talking to people who aren't reading up on the notes or aren't watching stuff like this or aren't reading columns. Um, so it's possible um, to, to get, ca catch it and sort of understand what's going on without that external knowledge. What's your whole, Liz, what's your, what's your whole feeling on the whole living story thing paying off? I mean, we kind of we thought it was kind of a bit slow paced before. Do you feel like it's picking up? I feel like it picked up a little bit. There was a lot more content as far as actual story, not just kind of background scenery events going on that kind of let you know something was happening but didn't do a whole lot of advancement and they definitely started the story advancement and the actual like plot of it here um, so I hope that they kind of keep running with that and I'd love to see them moving to quicker things or have just the one update that then had things appearing randomly or at spaced intervals that were closer together than a month but I'm really pleased with what we have so far um, and I'd love to see it continue. Uh, Rich, how about you? Yeah, I agree. I, I think I'm kind of mixed because I really want the living story to work. I kind of understand their concept on a high level, and uh, I really think that it can uh, be some sort of unique content for it. But I don't know. You know, it, kind of starting it in January, and then you know it was very slow, like you said. And February mm -hmm. was really slow. I I don't know. It's it's been a lot of build up for not a lot of payoff right now for me. Um, I do like what they did this month. Don't get me wrong. I like the instances. I like the new characters. I like I like where it's going. But I was hoping that like Monday or, or Tuesday or this week or something that we would see another instance kind of appear or that the story would update without having to wait to that end of month patch. Because we've right. seen we've seen that happen in the middle of a month before where they would add just a little bit. Like the refugee camps would change to be some new dialogue. So we know that they have the, the ability to put things in without a, an actual patch. But I don't know. Uh, it, it it might be going a little too slow. Is it possible that when they do the slow stuff and they do the little things like that, that too many people miss that stuff? Sure. Because it's not it's not it's not big enough for people to kind of catch, and they maybe you know they will kind of want to go for these little bit larger packages that you really can't miss. Yep. And I feel like they're trying to make sure that the people who aren't logging in like on a nightly or near nightly basis are also feeling like it's paced right. So if you're the sort of person who like only plays on weekends it's still coming in fairly rapidly as far as your time in game is concerned. So I feel like we maybe as kind of the people who play it a lot uh, might have a kind of skewed perspective over what's an appropriate amount of time to spend on story versus time in other things. Sure. Everybody's too busy playing Super Adventure Box according to Chad. It's true. So, Actually, they, true. it would have been terrible if they had something out because I would have had to pick. <laughs> That, actually, that's a good point because because Super Adventure Box did come out Monday. So let's see let's see this next coming yeah. week if they yeah. if something advances there. That'll that'll be interesting to see. All right, moving on. Leaderboards are finally here. Only we can't see them yet, apparently. So what's <laughs> going on? Why can't we see them? They want to make sure that all the formulas are working, and uh, they want to make sure that it's uh, you know in place and calculating correctly before they reveal it. Because once they reveal it, if they have to adjust numbers, people are like, "What? I was yeah. number three or something like that. But and interesting because a couple of weeks ago we talked about the leaderboards, and they're not going to be showing the PvP rating right away, right? Mm -hmm. and we were wondering yeah. why. Well, when I was at PAX East, I actually asked. Uh, Jonathan Sharp, I was like, so what's the reason behind that? And it was the exact same answer. It was, you know, we've got, uh, you know, this complicated rating system on the back end. We just wanted to calculate for a while and make sure that, you know, we know it's working smoothly and we want to make sure that, you know, there's no, there's no issues with it before we release that information. So I guess that makes sense. Uh, big changes to dub V dubs progression. Who knew uh, something that players wanted was progression in dub V dub. So what's new? What's new here, Liz? 
Uh, so now you, in playing World vs. World and slaughtering other enemies or um, completing events, you will earn what's called world experience points. And those world experience points tr get tracked on their own sort of thing. So you can level up in your world experience points, which earns you ability points, which you can spend on being more resistant to siege damage, being better with siege weaponry, that sort of thing. They kind of tossed around, oh, you'll be able to carry more supplies, sort of, one of the things, but that costs like an investiture of something like 300 world ability points um, to get maxed out. So keep that in mind. Five extra supply, 300 ability points. Um, so you'll get, um, so as, as you rank up, you'll get these ability points to spend on things to make your character cooler, and you'll also get titles. So whereas right now, like everyone sees my character as Sanctum of Roll Invader or Defender. Um, I could level up and get Assaulter. I could level up and get other things. So it's a kind of way of getting recognized for being a badass. So titles, abilities, good stuff like that. Everything that MMO players obviously want. Um, Clearly. All right, let's talk about the, 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 sorry, I guess the hot topic we've been talking about for weeks, weeks, weeks is culling. So on top of all that, of course, culling has now been culled. What, what has been your experience so far, Richie? Is it working as intended? It's amaze balls. It's amaze balls. That is yeah. Richie's. Uh, that's, view. My, that's that's my. And you view can on. quote him on it. Yes, I I logged in. I turned the world versus world settings all the way up. Uh, max max went in, and I was just like, "What?" It was crazy. It, I saw everybody instantly. It was way different. It you really felt that. Now I'm I'm running a machine that's a year and a half old. Actually, almost two years old now. So it's not top of the line. Top of the line. You know, it's a pretty decent system, you know, but um, I I was very impressed. I it's a whole new ball game, <laughs> you know. It's much much more fun. I, I saw someone, I saw a group of people way off in the distance. There's no way I would have seen them before, and it was just it was unbelievable to kind of see that. And then I, I put a screenshot on Twitter or something like that. Um, just <laughs> there was just <laughs> there were dozens and dozens of people on my screen, and it was just a big mess. It was awesome. So it's it works for me. Togrim pointed out, and I really agree, like, I don't think we ever really understood the scale of battles before. Uh, I was in a defense of our garrison, and there were just so many people. And, and it's amazing, because you can actually make more intelligent decisions about where you're headed, because you can actually see people. Like, it would be really easy with Cullen to be like, oh, there's the army, I'm going to, you know, flank them from this way. Oh, no, wait, there's an entire another group of people there. So it really lets you make more intelligent decisions, and it completely changes feel and scope of it and i've been nothing but thrilled with it so far what's and i've a, had zero technical problems i was gonna say so what's uh so richie's running on like about a two-year-old machine with absolutely no problems on max what are you running i'm my machine's about a year and a half old and i've so far been able to run it on highest and highest for everything i've voluntarily turned it down because the last thing i want is to get into like the biggest fight possible where it really matters and suddenly you know drop to oh gosh no 10 fps uh but right now, I've been having zero problem with Highest. Um, so I've been really pleased with that. And I don't know anyone personally who's had to go nameplates only. I know some No nameplates only, because that's what we were wondering. We were wondering where this threshold was going to be and where you were going to have to slide on the, on the scale uh, right. uh, of your system. I have a buddy who has a, an, an older system who can't play anywhere close to Max Max. It, it just becomes way too sluggish. Right. And, and and he can't play at all. So he's had to turn it way down. I don't know if he has to go nameplates, nameplates, but uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's, actually, he's actually impacted by the, the culling being turned uh, off because he, you know, he has to, you know, he was playing better before the culling was turned off. Let's just put right. it that way. So. I know a lot of people who are on the mediums or lows end of it, but they're still having a good experience as far as seeing where things are and being able to make intelligent decisions, except for one person who freakishly couldn't see anyone on the screen. Um, but we think that might have been him. Oops. <laughs> So it sounds like it sounds like most of the community probably um, are are in pretty good shape with culling and don't really even need to make any system upgrades. So most people running a machine anywhere in the past, like sort of like year to two years, which I don't know what the average gamer actually machine runs right now. I'm thinking most people who watch this show have stuff that is pretty beefy and running. Because y'all are high end. We are. We are. We're yeah. watching this show, you're leave. It's Guildcast, right? Seriously. But the average Seriously. person may have something that's like four years old, well, two, three, four years old, who knows? But that's really good because we were kind of worried it was going to, he's going to teeter the other end of the spectrum and you were going to really need something like really insane to turn it all the way off. Right. Um, yeah. 
So no nameplates only. Did you guys try as a goof to turn and just go nameplates only and just see what it was like to, to actually go into battle? I probably uh, should, but I didn't. Yeah, that would have been smart, but I was too I was too amazed. I'm like, oh. It, it really is incredible to just see the mass of people. It, it's it's been is it completely super changed? Is it completely changed yes. WW? Like, is, is it like a completely new game now? Yes. It's totally changed my experience of it, for sure. It's, Very I'm cool. really glad that they were able to pull through on that. They delivered. Anet delivers, apparently. Apparently, they actually do deliver on stuff. Uh, so I want to talk about some of the uh, guild mission system and all that good stuff. But first, I want to talk to you a little bit for, about our sponsors. Uh, I've been getting a lot of uh, emails and texts and form posts to me asking me uh, what they can do to help Game Breaker. They want to help more. Help. How, what can I do? What can I do? Well, really, honestly, the best thing that you could possibly do is support our sponsors. You support our sponsors, it supports Game Breaker. So... We've got a great deal going on with Netflix. If you use the URL, netflix.com slash GameBakerTV, you can go over and sign up for a free 30-day trial. Just download the app, put it on your iPhone, or your iPad, or your Android, or your Roku, whatever you got, PS3, Xbox, or even just your desktop, really. Uh, and then start streaming television and movies and comedy and all that good stuff straight to your machine of choice. Just use that URL. Go to netflix.com slash TV. All right, so let's talk about some guild mission systems. Uh, basically, some improvements all around, uh, including new mission type, uh, more bounty targets, new weapon skins, bunch of bunch of good stuff. Um, the amount of achievement points you can earn from the repeatable Dungeon Explorer and uh, what is it, the agent uh, achievements have been capped. Mm -hmm. Now, what is this for? This is for the leaderboards and the achievement rewards that they're working on for a future update, correct? Yeah, so it's to keep people from just farming the same achievement for points and also in the chance that in the long term they put in other like chests that you can buy with achievement points sort of thing. Um, this would keep people from being able to be like, oh, I'm just going to keep doing these forever and you know create points out of nowhere. So this will help kind of limit that system. Now this next one here, this is a pretty amazing patch note. Have you guys seen this one? Lip flap has been enabled for all voice lines on players and NPCs in the world. <laughs> hey, it's lip flap. Lip flap lets me call lip flap. It's like an inside Matters, terminal, man. like TV thing. Can't show. Yeah, lip you flap. think they could find like a prettier word for it? The, the, lip it, flap like, sounds really. It's the oh, that's Muppet, actually... Muppet Beaker syndrome is what it, it is. is. That's a, yeah. it's actually that's actually the term that they use in television. No, I know. For, so I, it's I, like, I know. It, it's just such a. Not really flattering term. No, no, it's not flattering. How about this one? This is this one is pretty good as well. Added missing families to the daily kill variety <laughs> achievement. <laughs> it sounds awful. Like, oh, the pawn traps are on there now. So oh. basically, arena net deliver, but they are also monsters. Confirmed. Absolutely monsters. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. Added oh, yeah. missing families to the daily kill variety achievement. Just let that sink in. Think about that, okay? If you find these lost families and kill them. It sounds awful. I, I, I laughed pretty hard when I saw that. Um, so what they mean is that they've added in um, variety types as far as like Shiver Peak, Ascalonian sort of things. But it, it does sound really, really, really terrible. <laughs> So bad. All right, this is a pretty big change for thieves. The amount of time it takes before a thief can re-stealth after an attack has been increased four seconds from three seconds. So I know that's only one second, but that's actually kind of huge for gameplay, isn't it, Liv? Uh, and especially... Yeah, no, it's huge, especially in PvP, where, like, my Guardian, if a thief is still thing every three seconds, it's a big difference if they have a whole extra second of that, because that's an extra second of me kind of getting to um, do my bit of the of the battle, so I'm really excited to see that as someone who doesn't play thief in PvP a lot. <laughs> Two thumbs way up. My Two thumbs way thrilled. up for somebody who doesn't PvP a thief. Uh, how do you think it's going to affect, like, the backstab? I mean, backstab mechanic, it's going to probably affect a lot. I hope it nerfs it into the ground. I mean, um, if you build your thief to jump in and out of stealth, I mean, this really hurts if that's kind of like your yeah. game style. Mm -hmm. um, so 
I mean, I'm sure they tested it, but we'll kind of see how the meta kind of changes. I mean, I've been going into hot joinable matches where I was the only non-thief of 15 people, so I don't really mind them getting a little weaker. Um, but yeah, we'll see. All right, pets now benefit from their owner's agony resistance. We talked about this a little bit uh, last show, I think. Much needed change. Um, but the next one is really huge. Richie, what do you think of this? They, they, they've reduced the quickness from 100% attack speed to 50%. That is a yeah. huge nerf. Yep. Yeah, we, uh, we do a lot of dungeon runs with a Mesmer in our group. <laughs> and uh, not having that huge burst, that's kind of like, you know, kind of hurts a little bit, but it, it is across the board. I, I, from a warrior's point of view, I know one of the, you know, the builds that people use is Great sword with bull's charge, which is like a rush in and a stun, and, uh, and then you pop the, the quickness ability, and you basically can you know hundred blades and obliterate someone before they have a chance to get out of you know out of the way, and uh, um, that's cool on one hand, <laughs> and be, but nerfing it uh, obviously hurts. But I've heard seen a lot of complaints on the forums from. You know, warriors that uh, PvP saying that you know their their build choices are now kind of you know kind of limited. So I I don't know. It, it's a huge nerf. It is across the board. Doesn't just affect one class. Um, but um, yeah, it's interesting to to see what you know what what was the reason exactly behind it. What were they seeing uh, that you know made that change something that they needed to go after? I don't know. I don't I think part of it might have been that Mesmer's had an elite that was kind of a no-brainer as far as what you're taking for most PvE content. Yeah. And so they've kind of leveled the playing field for that. And, you know, in the long run, they're only taking 30 or 45 seconds off your average dungeon. But or they're only adding that much more time to it because quickness isn't that OP. Um, but it is a little sad, a little tiny bit sad, just because I love seeing my Necro in Lich form casting so furiously. Do you, I mean, do you think it, was it was it definitely needed, or, or could this have been possibly something that maybe you feel it could have been maybe split up between PvP and PvE? I mean, they seem very reticent to do that again. Yeah, it, you know, they it, did that early on, and they, we haven't really seen that recently. So I don't know. Yeah, it, I, I understand not wanting to do that any more than you have to, but I mean, selfishly, yeah, I would have loved for them to split that up because I like being able to pop that in dungeons and get done that much faster. But uh, so it goes. All right. Uh, daily and monthly laurels can now be obtained through either PvP or PvE dailies. You won't get the additional laurels for doing both, though. Um, this sounds like a, an excellent improvement to the daily system for fans of PvP, obviously. Um, but if, you, if you're doing both sets of dailies, you'll still be rewarded for both, right? Just not with the laurels. Right, you'll get the normal reward, but not the laurel reward. But this way, people who want to save up in a general sense for um, fractals or for what, what have you, they can still earn those rewards without feeling like they have to PvE every day if that's not their thing. Yeah, and it's also good for the PvE player that that wants to dabble in PvP, right? Yes. And they say, you know, hey, I can start, you know, can learning the ropes now. in PvP and and still get my my laurel token every day. So that's a pretty awesome change, I think. I'm pleased. Our peers rejoicing from this one. So you can now buy a name change contract in the gem store for 800 gems. Anybody getting married? Marriages, marriages everywhere. Anyone? See, that would never occur to me. Like, I would just do it because I've made a terrible mistake on launch day and yeah. be like, no, I don't want to delete this character who's almost seven months old now, but I also don't like, you know, whatever terrible name I thought was a good idea at midnight sort of thing. I, so. I, would, I would love to see the stats on the sales on that, like, the first day because people have been jonesing for that thing for a while now. So, yeah, yeah I'm sure, sure they made a killing on that. So, I check bet. Z Gemstore if you want to change your name. It is now available. Um... Next thing, huge. 18 tournaments have been disabled. For now. For, Possibly for a long uh, time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? So Tyler right. Beer said, said this about it. He said, uh, our two team tournaments have been growing in popularity since they were introduced. However, very few players were queuing up for the 18 tournament format anymore. Due to that, uh, this often means that players can queue up for hours without an 18 tournament ever kicking off. Uh, this is not a good experience. We decided to disable them while we may bring back multi-round PvP tournaments in the future. For now, we will be discontinuing the eight-team 
three round tournament format. So my first question, I just got to ask. Like, so I don't know what, what is this? Is this a case? It almost sounds like, is this a case of giving up on something instead of fixing it? Cause there's obviously a problem with it. No, I don't think it's giving up on it. It's basically looking at the numbers and saying, Hey, it's not a good player experience for them to queue up for this thing and wait for hours. If no one's doing it, let's disable it. And I, I don't think it's any surprise to anybody that, you know, structured PVP has been hurting and we know that they're working a lot of things, but they're not in the game yet. So if, if they start to put in custom, you know, leaderboards and spectator mode and, you know, these different things that are going to draw players back into it, if, if the population goes up and there's a, there's a huge demand for it, then they'll, they'll put it back in. But to just leave it there like a wounded llama just wailing there, <laughs> is, that's not going to do good for anybody. So kill it for now and <laughs> raise it from the dead later. Like a wounded yeah. llama. Nobody wants a wounded llama in their game. No. Can we just make that the name of the show right now? Somebody mark that down. There you go. Good, good deal. Um, yeah, wounded I don't llama. think that they're necessarily consigning it to the wounded llama graveyard yet. Um, but it does make for a poor player experience to sit there and wait for hours for something. So they're just taking away the ability to have that crappy experience while they work on things to maybe eventually get to put in when it's better. Um, I mean, this is supposed to be a pretty big deal. I mean, 18 tournaments were like meant to be a big deal, especially for hardcore PVPers. I mean, that was a big draw. Yeah, I, I just don't think there's a lot of hardcore PvP players really playing at the moment. I mean, I mean, we I've listened to a couple of those like state of the games uh, that they do a live stream with some of the you know the top players, and they're just there's just not a lot like they're queuing up and they're facing the same team over and over and over again because there's only like few teams playing. So I think it's just the the state of PvP right now. Um, I do think that one thing that they can do is if if they put all those features in and the, the pvp scene gets healthier um they can put those 18 tournaments back in in a more limited fashion say hey here is the month th during the month of may we're going to do qualifiers for you know uh, like a you know an 18 format for a uh, for a like a quarterly you know championship or something like that they can actually you know make make these smaller condensed time frames specific tournaments with you know specific rewards at the end of them and that might draw people in rather than just having the 18 format always open so i feel like they I have to bring these back though like i feel like they have to like if they if they with all these other things leaderboards spectator mode if they want to be you know seriously on the esports scene of doing this i feel like they have to bring back the the eight eight, eight team tournaments there's no way they can I, just leave these out to the wind so team tournaments i agree are just but I don't think they need them until they have the support there because if no one's playing it, there's no point. So they need to put in the things that will draw back the PvP players. And that's one thing where they're really lucky that they're not subscription because the people who were hardcore PvPers who were in at the beginning and have kind of filtered away, that's one less barrier for them coming back. This but they need the stuff there to attract them. They need to have the actual spectator. No, they need to get the custom arenas. They need to get so much stuff. And then once you have people back and playing, by all means, yes, 18 three round would be great and they really need to have that back at that point but right now it's unnecessary and i'd rather see them just kind of take it away so that people can't have a horrible experience while they're working what on do you feel like the main reason that they do, what do you feel like the main reason that people people aren't queuing up for them and playing them though is it the lack of the other systems because the people who want to play the eight eight team tournament style stuff want all the other things the additions of the of the leaderboards and stuff or is the, the play experience just not what they're looking for and it's more of a sort of mechanics and map based problems. I think it's the former. I think it's not having all of the the features in place that they were kind of expecting at launch and just kind of waiting for it and waiting for it and then we're suddenly realizing wait, we're going to be waiting for this for a long time and just losing interest. I think the mechanics are solid. I think the gameplay is fun. I think, you know, the the, the new map um what's the new map called? Just lost uh, it. Spirit Edge. Spirit Watch, right? Yeah, yeah Spirit Watch. That that one is is hugely fun with the 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 murder ball and the you know kind of the capture the flag kind of murder ball mechanic to it. I mean, I I think it, the maps are solid. I think the gameplay is solid. I just think it needs all of the the support that you know people have been waiting for. So yeah, and and another another thing that's interesting uh, on the PvP front. Again at PAX East, I talked to uh, Jonathan Sharp and John Peters, and it, they made some comment. They were talking about PvP maps and. Um, 
they made it sound like there's like a long list of maps that they already have kind of in the works because they, they they made some sort of comment like oh you should you, you know we've got this one map that we can't really tell you about but yeah, you know it's getting a lot of buzz around the office and everyone loves playing it and so that one was like fourth in the queue and now it's like bubbled up and so we, we should be seeing that pretty soon so I'm, I'm sitting there in my head going wait a minute you have like four in the queue <laughs> so they, they definitely have a lot of maps in the works and you know pvp is still something that we know that they're they're going to be focusing on, and, and we can expect a lot of these features to come out. Just, you know, we just got to be patient. You know, it's kind of like the culling thing, living story thing. There, there's patience that you, is necessary, but hopefully it's for a really good payoff. All right. Well, hopefully we'll see those very soon, and they bring those back, because I know a lot of the PvP scene wants the 8v8. I think they got to bring them back. Richie Procopio, follow him on the Twitter at Bog Auto. It's Richie Procopio. I always screw that up. Yeah, it's YouTube channel. YouTube channel is Bog Otter. Twitter yep. is Richie Procopio. It says it right on the screen. I That's know, right. but I'm not looking at that. I'm going from memory. My memory is really bad. <laughs> Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> Follow Richie on the Twitter at Rich Procopio. Make sure to go over to Bog Otter, his YouTube channel. Uh, Elizabeth Claire. Follow her on uh, Twitter at Bog Otter. No, I mean Elizabeth Claire. <laughs> <laughs> also not Bog Otter. Yeah, no also not whatsoever. Bog Otter. No, my brain failed already. Follow her on Twitter at Elizabeth Claire with an X. Go to massively.com and check out all her coverage over there as well. And you can follow me at Gary Gannon, follow Game Breaker TV at Game Breaker TV. And of course, come over all day, every day for all your video game news. We do the show live every single Wednesday at 6 PST. We'll be back to normal day and time next week. Sometimes we just make it up. Sometimes we just do it on, you know, whatever day, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Very whimsical. Back. Yes. We come can on do a over. family show on Sundays. We should do a family show on Sundays. It's the Lord's Day. Guys, have a great guys, gals. Have a great week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.